Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. Today's project is one that I have been looking forward to for quite a while now. It is this Conquistador style belt created using leather working as well as paracord braiding. Both fields, both leather working and paracord braiding bring something useful to the table. Leather working enables you to use holes in a nice looking strap, as well as a belt keeper, and you can integrate a belt buckle quite easily. The paracord crafts, especially using vivid colors, allows you to make a braided belt, which is a lot easier to do than using leather lace. When using leather lace, you would spend a lot of time preparing the lace and using paracord is a lot simpler and allows you to carry with you quite a bit of paracord. Now this project is not hard to do, but it takes some getting used to. All in all, I'm very happy with the results, so I thought I'd share this project with you. Now, if we take a look at the belt, it is basically a two-color variant of the Conquistador braid, so I make a section, then I splice in another color and do another section. I like the two-tone version, but you can do a single color or even three colors, four colors, depending on your preference. I've dubbed this belt the proper way of doing the Conquistador belt. This is because most people don't use the leather parts, which really do make the belt a lot more useful. This style of a belt, but using the leather lace, is described in Bruce Grant's book, The Encyclopedia of Rawhide and Leather Braiding. The only thing I changed was that I used paracord instead of leather or rawhide lace. With that said, let's move on to the tutorial. The first thing that we're going to prepare are the leather parts for our belt. We're going to cut a strap about 2 feet long and we're going to use it for making two parts of our belt. One part is going to be used to make the front of the belt where the tongue as well as the holes are located and the other part is going to be used around our buckle. Now as far as the width of this strap goes it really needs to fit your buckle very snugly. So do make sure that you measure both before cutting out. For cutting, you can simply use a knife and a ruler, but I'm going to use a strap cutter since I have one available. After cutting our strap, we're going to do the part next to the buckle first. Cut out a small section of the strap and fit it to your buckle. To secure the buckle, we're going to fold our strap like this. And then later down the line, we're going to either stitch or rivet these two sections together. But before that, we need to make the hole for the tongue of our buckle, as well as make a belt keeper. Now to make the hole, we're going to punch in two holes and then connect them using a knife. But first we need to mark down the hole and to do that, I usually test to see what works for this specific buckle. You will want a nice fit for the tongue so that it will hold in place and not move around too much. So mark the holes, then cut out the hole for the tongue. After making the hole for the tongue of your buckle, 
we can continue by making the keeper. For the keeper, I cut a narrower strip of leather and I'm now going to fit it to my belt. At the doubled section, we're going to wrap around once, like this, and then over the top. Mark down this length, so we have a doubled section here. Mark down this length and cut your strip. The third piece of leather that we need to prepare is the very front or the tongue. We need three distances determined before we can begin working. We need to know the distance between the very front and the first hole. We need the spacing between our holes as well as the diameter of our holes. With that determined, we can cut the length of the strap that we need. Usually the length of such a strap is going to be 10, maybe 11 inches. The diameter of the holes is usually determined by the tongue of the buckle that we are using. As far as the spacing for the holes goes, the way that I do it is to do 9 holes with the first hole starting about 2 inches away from the beginning of your belt. I space out my holes about 3 quarters of an inch apart. The more regular way of doing a belt is to start about 4 inches away from the start of the belt and then do 5 holes with an inch in between each of the holes. You can choose any way that you like, as long as it works, it's just fine. With that said, let's start marking down our holes. As you can see, I have placed a ruler exactly down the center of my strap to help me guide the holes. I'm going to place my first hole about 2 inches away from the beginning. I'm then going to place all of the next holes 3 quarters of an inch apart. So basically, I'm going to mark down the centers of my holes and this means that I need to make 3 quarters of an inch of a distance plus about the diameter of one hole to get to the next center of a hole. It may seem a bit complicated, but as long as you have 3 quarters of an inch between each of the holes, you're good to go. I'm going to mark down 8 holes besides the first one that I did. If you have an eye for punching holes, you can punch them now immediately. But for me, I use a compass and mark down my holes exactly, just to get a very centered look to my holes. So what I do is I basically mark down the hole, and then I can punch it. So after punching in our holes, the next step is to round off the very beginning of our belt. You can do that with a compass or just use something round and use it as a guide. And you have a marked edge which we're now going to cut. After cutting out my belt end, I'm going to continue by thinning down my belt keeper. If we place it around our belt, like this, we can see that we have a doubled section here. We're going to thin down both of these ends in order to make it easier to stitch together as well as prevent it from bulking up our belt too much.
We're going to use a marble slab. And if we take a look, we're going to need to thin down this bottom piece here and this top piece here. So mark down the two sections, then thin them down. The other piece that we need to thin down is the one next to the buckle. Where the leather doubles up, we need to reduce some thickness in order to make the belt more comfortable and not too bulky. So again, you would mark down here. And we're going to thin down all of this section here up to this point. One thing that I really love using for thinning down leather straps is sandpaper. Low grit sandpaper can help you thin down any leather strap. It does take a bit of time, but it's still much cleaner than just using a knife. So even if you do thin down using a knife, do sand after to get a smoother surface. We're now going to bevel all of our leather edges, basically just removing them. This is optional, but it does improve the look of your project. If you chose to dye your leather straps, do make sure to follow these few tips. Apply your dye in an extremely well ventilated space or even better do it outside. Leather dyes as a rule are toxic. You will also want to protect your table, so do place some plastic or sheets or anything that you can throw away to protect your table. As far as protection for you, do use gloves. I'm actually using two pairs just to make sure that the dye doesn't come into contact with my skin. Not only it's not safe, but it's extremely hard to get out if it comes to your skin. We are actually wearing leather after all. So we're going to pour some dye here. I'm going to use Fibing's Professional Oil Dye, which in my opinion is the best dye to use. So with that said, let's do some dip dyeing.
After you have dyed your leather, pick up your dye and simply pour it back into the container. After you have dyed your leather and let it dry for a little while, it is a good idea to buff it. Buffing basically just means that you take a piece of paper or cloth and you rub it on the surface of your leather to remove the excess pigment. If you don't do this, it will rub over your clothes, which is something you do not want. After dyeing our three pieces of leather, we're going to continue by burnishing the edges. Burnishing is basically applying friction to the edges, which is going to compress them and make them much smoother. To do that, first take some water and apply it to an edge. You will want to do half a foot, maybe up to a foot at a time. Take a burnishing tool, you can just use a piece of wood or canvas for example, and we're going to start rubbing up and down on the edge, which is going to make it much smoother and more consistent. And we're going to do that on all of the edges. Once you have done your burnishing with water and then rubbing it in, you're going to get a shinier and more pleasant to the touch kind of an edge. You can upgrade it further by rubbing in some wax, which is going to protect the edge, make it shinier and even more pleasant to the touch. So what you do is simply wax the edge and then rub in the wax using your burnishing tool. After burnishing our belt keeper, we're going to put it together. Now, we have already thinned down the sides, so it doesn't bulk up too much, and we're going to continue by punching in a couple of holes for stitches, then glue it together and finally stitch it in place. Now if you're not into stitching, you can just use a couple of rivets and it will hold the belt keeper together just fine. So the first thing is punching in the holes. For that purpose I'm going to use a pricking iron which is used just for this purpose of making the holes for stitches. If you don't have one, you can drill in the holes or you can use the smallest of the punches on our revolving punch. All of these methods will give you the holes that you need to stitch it together. Then continue by gluing our keeper together. This glue is only there to keep it in place while we stitch it up. You can use woodcraft glue, for example. One trick that I do is I place two needles, one at the start of my stitches and one at the end, just to mark and line up all of my stitches on both sides of my keeper. This is quite a common trick and it helps you line up your stitches while the glue dries.
To stitch everything together, we're going to need some thread, two needles, as well as some scissors. As far as the needles go, these are harness needles used to stitch leather. The thread is polyester thread, and you're going to need about four times the distance that you're stitching. This is the usual rule when stitching together two layers. We're now going to stitch our belt keeper together. So take your two needles and thread them one to each side. We're going to start stitching on our second hole, so pick up one of your needles and travel through the second hole. Make sure that both ends of your thread are of equal length. We're now going to travel through the first hole with our left end, then with our right end. From this point on, we're going to stitch from front to back. So again, we travel through the second hole. Again, starting with our left end. Pull it through. And again go through the same hole with your right end. Then the left end through the third hole. and the right end through the third hole. And the left end through the fourth hole and the right end through the fourth hole. Usually, the right needle travels under the left needle when you're going through the hole. This is just for consistency's sake. At this point, we are again going to make a back stitch, so we travel one down, and again, left end. Then right end, like this, then bring your inner thread towards the outside, like this, and you can snip it off. With the keeper pretty much prepared, we can now focus on stitching it in. Now we can stitch these two layers together, either horizontally or vertically. I have chosen to do the vertical route, and this is basically to do a line of stitches, then insert the keeper, and then do another line of stitches just to hold the keeper in. Whichever route you choose, it will work just fine.
I'm going to again punch in my holes. You can use any other tool that you want, a drill, maybe your revolving punch, anything to get you the holes that you need to stitch these two layers together. We're now going to stitch in our keeper. I already made a row of stitches to show you where the keeper goes. So first we make a row of stitches right next to the buckle, then we insert the keeper, then do a second row of stitches. I'm going to demonstrate the stitching technique on this second row here, and it is exactly the same way for the first row. We take two needles and you're going to need thread that is at least four times the distance that we're stitching. Take one of the needles and go through the second hole. Make sure that both pieces or ends of your thread are of equal length. Then go through the first hole, first with your left end. Then with your right end, the right end travels just under your left end when stitching. Then we're going to swap our two needles around to get this doubled section on the outside. Then travel into the first hole again. Again, we start with the left needle. Then the right needle. It is very important that your thread is not pierced by your needle. So do make sure you don't make that mistake when stitching. Then continue into the next hole, again starting with your left needle, then your right needle, and tighten up. That's all we're doing. Left needle through, pick it up with your right needle, then the right needle goes through just under your left thread, then tighten up. Continue until you have stitched all the way to your other side. So left needle, right needle, just under your left needle, And tighten up.
Once you get to the other side, sew through your last hole, switch your two needles around again, then go through your previous hole, sew the last one that you went through, again starting with your left needle, then with your right needle, then tighten up. And you get this doubled section on this side as well. We're then going to do one more back stitch. So again, left needle, then right needle, like this. Then take one of your needles and run it to the other side. In my case, I'm going to go from right to left. Just to get both ends of my thread on the same side. Now I can trim it off. As the final step in the leather working part of our tutorial, we're going to cover both leather pieces using a top finish. Now there are many products out there that you can use in order to protect your leather. Some you may already have that are designed for shoes. You can use any other. I'm going to try a new one, which is this super sheen, and I'm not quite sure how it will work out. The super sheen worked out well for me. I've applied several layers and let them dry in between. I'm going to continue by punching in the holes needed to start our conquistador braid. So I went ahead and punched in the holes needed to start my conquistador braid. For this width of a strap, you can accommodate 4, maybe 5 holes. And you want to punch them on the side with the buckle, as well as on the side with the holes. We're going to start on this side and finish on this one. It doesn't really matter where you start and where you finish. Now, the holes should be large enough to accommodate your paracord, so just enough so that you can fit your paracord through. The top hole here is a bit larger since I'm going to use it twice with my paracord. As far as paracord goes, you can use one continuous length which will be quite long and hard to work with. Old time braiders used smaller lengths and then spliced them in together, which is what I'm going to use as well. It's much faster and comfortable to work with. So I'm going to use about 5 feet of this color of paracord. Then I'm going to switch to the black, again 5 feet, and then back to the red, and so on. I'm going to use a lacing needle to help me out, which is not absolutely needed, but I highly recommend it. To start, we're going to travel through the top of the holes. So the first hole, pull your cord through, and just leave a little bit of a tail, which we can cover in order to secure our cord. We're going to come around from the back and go through the same hole again. This is why I made the top hole a bit larger so it is easier to feed two pieces of paracord through. Like this, and we have our first loop. I'm going to wrap around from the back again and come through the second hole from the top. Then the third hole, again we come from the back, 
come in from the front. And the last hole, exactly the same way. So we come from the back, come in from the front. Like this. You will want to tighten up these loops a bit. We really don't want any slack. So let's say that this is good enough. We're now going to start braiding, which is done at the bottom. We start by going from the top through the first loop. Like this. And the most important thing that you need to do when doing the conquistador braid is when you're braiding from the bottom up, you need to have your working end behind itself. So here it is at the front, which is not good. It needs to be like this, so behind itself. Here. Then tighten up. Do the second loop. And you can see that again, my working end is coming behind itself. Then the third loop from the top again. Like this. And the last loop, the same way. We come in from the top. Like this. And we have one row already done. We're now going to move from the top towards the bottom. Take your lacing needle again, come in through the top of these loops that we just made. And when moving down, we're going to move in front of our working end. So just the opposite of what we did before. Like this. Then come in through the second loop from the top. And make sure that your working end is in front or on top of your loop. This does take some getting used to, and this is the most common problem that people have with this braid. And the last loop. Like this. We're going to continue the same way. So we went down before, so now we go up, we start on the bottom of the loops,
And remember that we travel up. So we're going to go behind our working end here. Like this. And again, we did a row. We're now going to move from the top towards the bottom. And again, go through the top of the loops. And as you can see, we need to go in front of our working end when traveling down. So guys, I hope that this braiding technique is quite clear now. It does take some getting used to. I'm going to continue until I run out of cord in this end. Then I'm going to show you how to splice in another one. This time it's going to be of the black color. So I used up about 5 feet of red. I'm now going to switch to 5 feet of black. So I take my black cord. And as you can see, I cut the end and I removed about half an inch to an inch of the inner strands. I'm now going to take my first cord, the very end, and I'm going to feed it through and come out through the sheet like this. Like this. I'm now going to take the lacing needle and I'm going to attach it to my black cord. Like this. I'm going to cut off the end of this cord. Remove the ends, about half an inch to an inch. Then slightly melt the sheet. Now once we melted the end, we're going to feed our lacing needle with the black cord attached through the middle of the sheet of the first color like this and then simply pull it through. So what we did was create a very secure splice with which we can continue braiding. So let's continue the same way. We will go up and down 
with this cord until we run out of black and then we're going to splice in some red. After a while of braiding, you're going to reach the proper length for your belt. So how do you know that you have reached the proper length? When the tongue of your buckle will reach the middle hole in your belt, at that point you have the proper length for your belt. This allows you to either lose some weight or gain some weight. Now, to finish off our belt, we're going to need some cord in our end. And we're going to start on the bottom side and go through the first of our holes. Like this. Then go through one of your loops. I'm going to go from the top down, just like we did before, like this. Travel under this loop, like this. Then place your cord under the belt, like this. It is basically the same technique that we use to travel up, but we are also attaching this strap. We continue by going through the second hole from the bottom. Then through the next of the loops. Go through the loop. Like this. Tighten it up. And go behind again. Through the next of the holes, so the third one. Through the next loop, from the top. Through the loop. Tighten up. Behind the strap. And through the fourth hole. Then through the last of the loops in our braid. Through the loop. Like this. And then tighten up. Place the working end behind the strap like this. And at this point you could either tuck your paracord here. Or. You can do another pass through the last of the holes just to secure everything together. Like this. And then place it under here. This is a more secure finish which I prefer. With that guys, your belt is complete. You would trim the ends and enjoy a brand new Conquistador style belt. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you have any questions, please post them down below. Thank you and see you next time.